Last week, Taylor Swift released 1989 Taylor's version, and one of my favorite parts about getting these Taylor version re-releases is getting the new Vault tracks, and that's really where I think 1989 shined as a re-release. I really, really, really enjoyed the Vault tracks, and so with that said, in today's video, I want to show you how to produce a song in the style of those Vault tracks. So a lot of them were produced by Jack Antonoff. They almost sound more like Midnight songs, but I'm going to show you why I think that they fit more into 1989 than Midnight's, and we're going to break down basically all of the different production techniques used throughout all four or five of those songs. So let's dive right in and let's check out how to make a Taylor Swift vault track. But before we do, my name's Austin. You're watching Make Pop Music. We have weekly tutorials on music and music production. So make sure you follow us. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see these videos every single Friday. Comment down below what you want to see in the future. And if you want to support us, head over to our website, makepopmusic.com after this video. We have sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs, a start to finish production course, and a ton of freebies. I'm even going to put up some of the free samples that we use in this video. So if you want to download a pack of some of the sounds that we use in this, go over to our website, makepopmusic.com. There will be a link in the description. Let's check it out. So to start, I want to go ahead and just pull up some kind of like pad sound just to find the chord progression of this. So I actually pulled up a pad called Sidewalk. This is out of a preset pack that we haven't released yet called Lush, but that will be coming out in November. So we're going to be using some new products that you can't get, but I will include this as kind of a free download. So again, like I said, if you visit our website, you can download a selection of some of the different sounds in this video. Not every single thing, but you can get a lot of them. All right, let's go ahead and find the chord progression. I think something like that works. So we're in C major. We're just doing a one, five, six, four progression. Taylor uses that chord progression all the time. There's a really, really, really good video on YouTube breaking down how often she uses certain progressions. And that one led the charge by a mile. So yeah, we're going to stick with that. I'm going to go ahead and lay down some MIDI. We're at 109 BPM. And I'm using this pad because it's just kind of nice. It's pretty. It's got this little like bird granular noise in the background. And a lot of these songs have some of those like kind of weird almost like intangible elements because Jack Antonoff does that stuff a lot. And this pad just really like hits the nail on the head for me. So let me lay that down and then I'm gonna layer up some different synths as well with this. So I have that MIDI laid down. We're just doing a C major into a uh, G major, into an A minor, into an F major. And we're just gonna do that and we're using that same pad. And then I'm layering this up with kind of this like movement pad. So a lot of Jack Antonoff productions, especially on pretty much every single one of these vault tracks on 1989 has some kind of like gated kind of pulsating synth. So we have this one called Ken's Chords. This is also gonna be out of our new Lush pack that's not out yet. And it sounds like this. And we're just gonna tuck that behind that nice pretty pad because that gives us some of that kind of like movement that you hear in a lot of these vault tracks. And to get even more movement, we're gonna add an arpeggiated synth on top. And for that, I'm just gonna use Anna because they have a really, really nice built-in ARP. Here's what the ARP is in Anna. It's just ARP 15 out of Anna 2. And then I have kind of my own little arpeggiated pattern drawn in. And it's just playing that same chord progression. And what we're doing is we're automating this little filter right here up a little bit as it progresses, just so it'll kind of add in a little bit of extra movement. And instead of kind of playing all of those chords, we're just going to pedal on that C major so it can kind of sit over top. That's another thing that you hear in a lot of those productions on 1989 Vault Tracks is that the arpeggiator that sits over top kind of just pedals on either one note or one chord. So now to thicken things up, I'm going to go ahead and add a bass. We're going to add two different basses that we kind of alternate between. We're going to add a big kind of Reese bass and then this kind of jumpy movement bass. So for bass number one, this is just a patch called Grease Lightning. This is out of our Spectrum pack. And what I did is I actually just brought down the sustain so it acts more as like almost a long, long 808. And then that's just kind of playing the root note underneath everything. And then we have this bass right here that I just made off camera. Uh, this is essentially just kind of like a saw bass that is jumping a little bit. So we have LFO2 right here automating the level and the cutoff. 
Yeah. So I'll go ahead and include this base as well in the free downloads. This is not from any of our packs. It's just something really, really simple that I made for this video. And with that, that starts to add a little bit of movement. So we'll have an A section of the verse and a B section, and it sounds like this. Now let's go ahead and add some percussions and some drums, and then I wanna add in some weird kind of like granular synths, just to give everything a little bit more movement and ear candy. For the first little percussion loop that I have, I actually pulled this out of a pack that we haven't released as well. So this pack is called Sweet Tooth. It's basically just like a bunch of ear candy, effect samples, loops, stuff like that. And we have a whole top loop section, and in that, I remembered that I made this one that has like this kind of like 1980s, um, like bongo kind of movement. So I'm just using that to give us a little bit of movement. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in some kind of granular synth just to give us some extra movement. So the first thing that I'm adding is this little granular loop that I also pulled out of um, Ear Candy. And it's an E major, so I just pitched it down for semitone so it would be in C major. And it sounds a little bit like this. It's just this weird kind of granular bell, and as I put that over the ARP and the movement sense, everything starts to feel really, really nice. And then I'm gonna do kind of the signature Jack Antonoff thing. He did this a lot in Midnight's. He also did this a lot on um, like Now That We Don't Talk and Is It Over Now? So I'm gonna add these little swelling synths. Sounds like this. And essentially all I did was I pulled up a pad in Serum. It was just the Horizons lead from Spectrum. And I essentially just played a D and then kind of rode that up with a pitch wheel and then down. So it rode up to an E and then when I rolled it down all the way, it rolled down to a C. And then I just put some different stuff on it and printed it like some effects modulator, portal, and it just gave me that really nice kind of like screeching synth. On top of that, we have another thing right here that's doing something similar. Just again, printed like a serum preset. This one was just a pencil lead and I put a bunch of different effects on it. So we have infiltrator and effects modulator, adding a bit of movement and then I printed that out and kind of just made it feel exactly how I wanted to. And then other than that, we have one more little granular loop that I'm adding in right here. This one was just kind of like pedaling on a G sharp. So I just took it down uh, one semitone just to make it a G. And that is also from the Sweet Tooth Pack that's not out yet, but I think it comes out, I think, November 20th. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty positive. It'll be November 20th. Uh, and then other than that, that's it. I'm going to leave that for now. This is probably where vocals will come in. I'm going to go ahead and copy this over, and I'm going to start to build out a verse that has a little bit of drums to it. Let's look at the drums for this. So for the drums, for kick and snare and main clap, I'm using Groove Agent, and I just have these multi-outed, so I have the kick. It is kick two from our pack called uh, The Wave. Snare three from the wave. And clap uh, crispies, I think was just from dark pop. And so all of those have a little bit of processing. The kick really just has some EQ and some reverb. The snare, again, some EQ and reverb. And then this clap right here has repeater that just gives us that slap back note. Nice, big, kind of 80s, acoustic-inspired drums, similar to what you'd hear in Jack Antonoff's productions all the time. And then I'm just layering that kick with this stomp from Dark Pop called Abort Mission. You're gonna hear big stomps and kind of cinematic drums underneath pretty much all of the bonus tracks that have drums. And then, again, I'm just adding some top loops. So that's that same loop from earlier, I just didn't put extra reverb on it and I left a clap in there. Uh, other than that, we have a hi-hat loop that I just pulled out of our Sweet Tooth pack as well. Um, I used a lot of Sweet Tooth, which is funny because it's not out yet, but whatever, it doesn't matter. And I pitched it down an octave. So now adding that with the synths and the bass that we have earlier, it sounds like this. I think I'm gonna swap that to a bass pad and I wanna add in some big tom fills because that feels more 
Jack Antonoff to me. So I added a couple little Tom fills. I have this one that is just the nostalgia Toms for our Dark Pop pack. And it's three Toms that I've just kind of done a really simple movement with. Super 80s, she has a lot of those kind of like 80s, like roto drums in her productions all the way back to 1989. And these are really what makes the bonus songs feel more like 1989 than Midnight's to me. Midnight's used a lot of like drum machines. It used a lot more kind of simple, smaller drum arrangements where these bonus tracks like Is It Over Now or Now That We Don't Talk or Slut, they use those kind of like big cinematic drums more similar to 1989. Granted, they were mixed a little bit closer to how they were in Midnight's, but I think the actual sound selection does make them feel more 1989 than Midnight's to me. Just by adding things like those kind of 80s toms, adding those big stomps, that's like signature 1989. And then we also have these extra little fills right here. Super Taylor Swifty. We've just got a retrofit Tom 1 and a retrofit Tom 2, both panned out. I think both are from Dark Pop. And then we have a clap layered with them doing this. Something that you hear in a lot of Taylor Swift drum productions, especially ones that Jack produces. And that pretty much does it for the verse. So now we have like a really minimal verse with not really much drummer percussion happening. Going into something that feels much more uh, cinematic. Now let's go ahead and let's work on the chorus. I'm gonna start with a drum arrangement for the chorus because that needs to be huge. And then we'll kind of like copy paste sense over and start to layer things as we get to the chorus. We're gonna sit on that same chord progression though because most of the bonus tracks in 1989 are just kind of like sitting on a four chord progression. So we're gonna do that. So here's what we have now for the drums for the chorus. We have a lot of the same stuff happening that we do in the verse. I'm just adding extra kicks to kind of make it pick up the pace a little bit. Specifically right here, we're doing double kicks. And then on top of that, I added a couple extra layers of like hi-hats, shakers, tambourines, and an extra top loop. So without all of the new layers, it sounds a little bit like this. We did add this like super roomy clap right here. And then we added a shaker and a tambourine, both from the shakers and tambourine packs that we have. We have loops in there, so I try to use these as much as possible just to add a little bit of realism. And then we have a live tracked hi-hat from our hi-hat pack. And that adds quite a bit of movement to that chorus. And then we have one more top loop that I pulled out of Sweet Tooth. Again, sorry you can't download that pack right now, but it is coming in just a couple weeks. And I'm not adding anything. All of that is just baked into that loop. And then for everything, the two Sweet Tooth top loops that we have, the hi-hat, the shakers, the tambourines, all of these tom fills, sounds like this. It's feeling super 1989, it's feeling super cinematic. It definitely feels like a Taylor Swift and Jack Antonoff kind of co-collaboration. Let's go ahead and let's add a new bass. I think we're gonna do the same thing that we did with that kind of like jumpy bass, and we're just gonna make it a little bit louder and a little bit brighter. And then I wanna add in a bunch of synths as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all that in now, and then I'll walk you through everything that we add. For the bass, we just have that same thing. I just opened up this cutoff a little bit. letting it rock a little bit harder. And then I have this bass here called Blossom. Um, this is just a really, really nice kind of like high gritty kind of like stinger bass. And I'm just using that to add a little bit of grit. And then I've got the same sidewalk movement synth and ARP from earlier. And you can hear that I've opened up that ARP with a cutoff filter like I talked about a little bit earlier. If I open up this automation, you'll see that we have all of this automation rising. So that kind of cutoff will rise every measure.
And doing little automation tricks like that can really make your production feel a lot more inspired, authentic, organic. You can kind of get away with using few, fewer elements because you have a lot more dynamics in every single individual thing. Now, let's go into some of the kind of extra saucy stuff that we have. We have this uh, granular loop. And then we have another granular loop as well. So what I could do is I could kind of pan these. And just weird granular glitchy stuff like that that has a bunch of like dropouts, it has a bunch of weird kind of like glitchy things happening. That's something that you hear so much in these Taylor Swift productions. And that's why these productions feel very simple. But when you actually listen, there is just so much stuff going on. So we have all of that. And then we just have this big brass right here that is just out of serum. Uh, it's the scenic brass. I think this is also from Lush. And then we have these two like little string scents that are just pedaling on one note. Panned out left and right. And then we have a little post-chorus synth right here. So we've just got two little synths. We've got a little shimmer synth and a little plucky synth. And now with everything, we have this really big chorus that has a lot of movement from those granular synths and those arpeggiators. And it just, it feels super cinematic. I'm gonna add a couple little risers and hits and ear candy and then we'll add in vocals. For effects and ear candy, I just have this little like noise sample. I took that from our Sounds of Life pack, and then I added these little vocal shouts in because that's something that I heard in Is It Over Now and Now That We Don't Talk, and they were all over Midnight's. It's like these little shouts right here. Um, let me show you what they sound like. So I added these different vocal hits in, so I have this little whoop. And then I have these like little low O's. Those just felt super appropriate to add in. And then I have a big swell right here and a big impact right here. Let's go ahead and add vocals so I can cover some of the vocal production techniques and then I'll show you everything all together. I got vocals tracked up for this. I just used the Lawton Audio Eden going into my HA81A and then into my Audioscape 76D and then into my RME UFX. So that's my vocal chain. And then here is the vocal that we have. So we have a lead vocal through the kind of intro or I guess it would be like verse A. So we just have a little bit of EQ and compression. There's really nothing out of the ordinary happening there. If I take off the effects, it just sounds like this with the uh, processing. I'm staring out of a window pane, thinking about how you will avoid my name. So we have a quarter note delay, and then we have a short reverb that are really kind of the only spatial processing things we have happening on sends. So the short reverb is just out of Verb Suite. It's just a really short, small Vox room. And that's something that she uses a lot in these kind of vocal processing. Uh, techniques that they're doing on the album. It uses a lot of like really short, roomy, slappy reverbs. And then she'll tuck the long reverbs really, really, really low in the mix. And then for the delay, we just have a quarter note delay from repeater. Nothing really, really wild. And it sounds great. Let me show you what it sounds like in the mix. I'm staring out of a window pane, thinking about... But where this really starts to shine is a lot of her songs, especially the bonus songs, have like this like doubler or harmonizer or chorus effect happening on the vocal. And instead of doing that on a send like I normally do with parallel widening, I actually just added in this 910 harmonizer and I have it at like 5% wet. And it spreads it out and it gives it this weird chorusy gloss that you hear all throughout her songs. And if you're not sure how to recreate it, this is exactly how. I'm staring out of a window pane about how you avoid my name. Just spreads it out a little bit, gives it this like weird sheen. It's really, really nice. And then one thing that they also use a ton on these bonus tracks is like a space echo. So I'm using the Fox Echo from Safari Pedals as my version of a space echo. 
But it's really cool. It's just like a tape echo that has delay, chorus, and reverb in it. And you can go pretty aggressive with this. I only have it at 8%. I'm staring out of a window pane, thinking about how you avoid my- You can widen it up. I'm leaving it at 22% because this vocal is already wide as shit with all of the uh, short reverb and the harmonizer happening. So I don't want a ton of width from that space echo. But with those two effects, it really helps this vocal feel a lot more uh, 1989 vault track era. I'm staring out of a window pane, thinking about how you- That versus this. I'm staring out of a window pane, thinking about how you avoid my name. I can smell. So that's all that we have happening for the first little verse, and then we're just layering it up with this high falsetto harmony. We're using the harmonizer a lot more wet on this, so like 62%. We have a long reverb now as well, which is just a Valhalla Vintage verb at like three, per, uh, three seconds. And then we are blending this tape echo in a lot more as well. So here's what this sounds like. And I'm just tucking it under as like a nice little harmony. So it's just like a really shoddy falsetto harmony for me. And then we're going into the second version of the verse where it's kind of the same thing. I'm just driving that harmonizer a little bit more and just it just kind of like opens up a little bit essentially. So we go from one vocal and then that little high harmony to now we're starting to stack things. And I can still feel your hands fly slowly up my dress. Wait, why'd you have to throw it? So for this, we just have that main vocal again. Wait, why'd you have to throw it away? We have that little high falsetto harmony that's being super processed with the harmonizer. Wait, why'd you have to throw it away? And then I've double tracked a couple different harmonies just to kind of add in some texture. And these have some Valhalla Vintage Verb printed on them on the track. So we're going really long with this. We're going like six seconds. I want these to be super spacey. And then we have a left vocal and a right vocal stacked, just basically singing the same thing as the lead. I just sang it two more times. Wait. And I'm accenting certain words because that's something that she does a lot on her songs. She'll have these big kind of spacey kind of single words that stand alone. And then she'll just have her main kind of lead punchy vocal up the middle. And it creates this nice little like call and response. And it's something that Taylor does a lot. So I wanted to highlight it in this tutorial. Wait, why'd you have to throw it away? I love just like a Polaroid there. So now we have that, and then we just have this little stay stack that's going to be going into the chorus with this little whoa. Stay, whoa, whoa, whoa. So all of those sound like this. Stay, whoa, stay, whoa, stay. Whoa. I can't tell you what. Now we're going into the chorus. This is pretty much the last thing that we have to talk about. We have a lead vocal. Again, processing is pretty similar. It's a little bit brighter, and the harmonizer is... I actually used a different one, so I used a dual harmonizer on this one. Uh, but it's kind of doing the same thing. I just wanted it to be in a slightly different space. I can't tell you one time, tell you two times, tell you three times more. You so I have this one a lot more up the middle, because right now we're actually going to stack the vocals left and right. I can't tell you one time, tell you two times, tell you three times more. You keep bringing up shit from the past, it's like you keep in score. We... And then I have that high falsetto harmony as well, just panned out. I can't tell you one time, tell you two times, tell you three times more. You keep bringing up shit from the past, it's like you keep a score. We and again, all of those are being processed with either that like uh, Fox Echo, so basically a tape echo or a space echo, or they're being processed with that 910 harmonizer or dual harmonizer, or they're being processed with both. And then I kind of just EQ them all, like these, these high vocals right here. I just like took a bit of top end off. Just to give me a little bit more like band past effect because I don't need all of that top end layered on top of these lead vocals that are already super bright. So I have all of that. And then going into this post chorus, we just have these big Taylor Swift anthem shouts that we have right here. So I just tracked the word forevermore like nine times and I just yelled it. Forevermore. 
And we've just got a little bit of EQ, scooping out some lows, popping in some highs. We have that Fox Echo. This thing was really the star of the show. Um, if you haven't heard of Safari Pedals, go check out their stuff. They make really, really incredible plugins. But you can see on this one, this is where we have the width 100% wide. And we're using a different mode on the Echo, so it's a little bit longer. It's not so slappy. And then we have a quarter note delay right here with repeater. We're just using the Digital 42, which kind of gives us a more filtered out delay sound. And then we just have a fat ass reverb right here with Vintage Verb, like 5.2 seconds. And then we're just layering that up with a couple drier ones on our lead vocals. Forevermore. Forevermore. We're just shouting them. So I just sang it in two octaves, a high octave where I kind of yelled it and then the low octave. And that is pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what this entire song sounds like. We are going to have a little intro that's just going to kind of be a granular synth swell up. There's nothing to really highlight there. It's just going to be the same synth that we have from earlier. And then you can hear the whole thing. So here's what it sounds like if I were to produce a track for Taylor Swift for her 1989 Vault tracks. Check it out. Again, if you want to download some of these sounds for free, you can head over to our website. There will be a free pack where I take an assortment of these. Or if you want to purchase any of them, I tried to say which packs all of these were from. You can check those out at mcpopmusic.com as well. Let's go ahead and let's check this out. And there you have it. That is how to produce a song like Taylor Swift's 1989 Vault Tracks, specifically really anything that Taylor Swift and Jack Antonoff do together. If you like this video, please make sure you like it. If you want to see videos like this more in the future, make sure you subscribe to us because we have these every single Friday. We haven't missed a week in like almost a year. So make sure that you subscribe because we are pretty dedicated on the channel. And then other than that, if you want to support us, head over to makepopmusic.com. You can check out sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs. We have a start to finish production course. It's like 14 and a half hours where I walk you through how to produce a song from start to finish in real time. Uh, and then other than that, we have a bunch of really, really cool free content that you can find in our free content portal. Sample packs, presets, little infographics, little uh, like eBooks on how to release your own music. So go check all of that out. Again, that's all at makepopmusic.com. I really, really appreciate you watching this video. Thank you for the support. I'll see you guys next week with much more content. Much love, peace.